Welcome to this video about real time in Blazor. As you have read in the title, we are not going to use SignalR. We can do that because we use Blazor Server. In Blazor Server, we can create a clause, uh, register it as a singleton, and in this clause, we have properties, and whenever we change the value of the properties, we broadcast these changes to all of its subscribers. Therefore, I first going to create a clause. I name it real time service. The clause has two properties. They have to be fully implemented. These properties will later be used to change the axis of a HTML element. I call them A and B. Now I also define an event of type function task. I name it update event. I trigger this event whenever new values are set to the property. I'm using the Elvis operator, so asking if uh, the event is not null. If the event is not null, I am invoking it. Now here, you may ask, the event is returning a task and we are not awaiting the task. Uh, it's not the best possible scenario, but we don't have another option because we are in a property and in the properties we can't use the await uh, keyword, but because the method that, uh, that is stored in, in this event is a, returns a task and we are not blocking the thread by, uh, by calling it the, the event like that. Uh, the, the only thing that we don't get if we don't await the task is we don't ex uh, get the exception handling. So it's like a fire and forget uh, method, but because it's a very simple example, it, it doesn't matter. So now I'm going to the main layout. I'm going to delete everything. Here we will define our, uh, our UI. So body, I will give it a margin of zero so that, that we don't have the scroll bars. Now I will make a container. Uh, this container is needed to set the perspective so that when we change the perspective, uh, let's just make display grid. So now here I define the two rotatable element, class rotate. So I'm going to change that here to a class selector container. Now rotate. Uh, I'm just setting a height and a width so that it's a square, giving it a background color, light coral. Now, to change the values of, uh, of, the, of the rotation, uh, I'm going to create two input ranges. Type range. Now I have to inject the real time service, I'm giving it the name of service. Now, the value of this first slider, I'm going to bind it to service A. Second value is going to be bind against service B. Now I'm defining the event on input. 
So every time the value changes of the slider or of the range, the value is reset. And because we are setting it a new value, the update event is uh, always invoked. So now, uh, first I have to define a code block. Uh, protected, override, initialized. Okay. Doesn't work with IntelliSense, uh, with autocomplete. I just have to type it out. On initialized async. Now in here, we are subscribing to the event. The event is expecting a function task, so just a, a, a lambda that is returning a task. Because uh, it will be invoked in a different thread, we have to call invoke async here. It expects an action. And in this action, we are just going to re-render our component. Now, uh, service P, I completely forgot. Now, because we want to rotate that, we have to have a, a way in which we can change the, the CSS properties. So I make an inline style, transform. Now, rotate X. Here, I'm going to use the razor syntax at service point A plus the, the text string here that's just needed for the CSS to work. And then I'm doing exactly the same thing also for the Y. See, I'm using B, and then I have to set the semicolon here too. Now, because I am uh, expecting it over the dependency inversion uh, or the yeah, dependency injection to be available to service, I uh, first have to register it. We have to do that as a singleton, otherwise, it wouldn't work real time service. So now let's first check if we can uh, rotate the element. And if that's possible, we can check the, the real goal of the application. If we can, OK, so we can rotate the element. Now, the goal of the application is that we have two browser windows open. Right. So you get the point what I want to do. I want uh, to display both the browser windows. And now we should be able to change one, and the other one is getting changed too. That's because both subscribe to the same uh, singleton service. And we, if we uh, reset the values of its properties, the event is getting triggered, and because both because every component uh, subscribes to that event, every component will be uh, notificated uh, when they have to re-render yeah, themselves. Uh, thank you very much for your attention.